Cruise with Gina Gina The News with Gina Grad. Since I mentioned it earlier, uh, Paris Hilton has a YouTube doc that is officially out today. And the part that's getting the most press so far is where she comes forward for the first time with allegations of abuse. She says she suffered at a teenage as a teenage student at a Utah uh, correctional school. We'll call it a disciplinarian school called Provost Canyon School. Uh, Fox News spoke with six former students and one ex-staffer of the boarding school who shared their own stories and corroborated her claims of either suffering or witnessing physical and mental abuse, you know, tackling kids and uh, strangling kids, um, forced medication, beating, solitary confinement. One woman even says she was sodomized by one of the staff who was trying to inject her with something. In a recent interview with People... Done and done. (laughs) The 11 months, yeah. Well... Wait a minute. Is this a place that rich kids or rich families like send their kids for discipline, like a like a boarding school that it, has they, a higher discipline a level? School. Yeah. I mean, I would imagine, you know, Utah has different rules. You know, they say what Montana, maybe the Dakotas have a little more loosey goosey uh, relationship with the discipline, the boarding schools. I have a clip from All the right. show that she talks about, uh, you know, begging to come home. I'm like, please, can I just go home? I've already been through so much. I promise I'll never go to a club again. Please, like, I I can't go back to these places. Like, you've no idea. There was no convincing them, no matter what I said. So I just didn't trust them. It made me not trust anyone, not even my own family. Oh, weird. Girl voice, mm-hmm. girl voice there. Told you, there's a lot of toggling between voices in this. Mm. So um, uh, I don't get. Yeah. Uh, first off, I do love the fact that everyone just hates their parents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even the Hiltons, you know, the kid. Uh, she was probably out of control when she was 15. Like her and her sister are going out clubbing in Manhattan, so they sent her to Utah. But I don't get the part where it's like she didn't trust them. Like they were. They sent her at this. She sent her away to this place because she was probably out of control, and Manhattan was not a good city. She was going full uh, Green Acres in Manhattan over there. With New York is where I'd rather <laughs> stay. I get allergic. She want to go to Utah. Like <laughs> I, I love you, but give me Park I Avenue. Avenue. No, I get it, but you can't go to a boarding school for four weeks and then come back. That's it's going to defeat the purpose. I, I don't know. I, it's yeah, like, but don't you usually think of boarding schools like overseas? Like, oh, I went to an all girls boarding school in Switzerland. It was boring, but it was fine. But she went. She got. She got yeah. beat up in Utah, according to her. I, I look. I, I'm so tired of everybody. Everyone looks back on their child and goes, "This guy was abusive, or this coach was abusive, or this this whatever." Look, if you if you get sexually abused, you get sexually abused. The part where like you were bullied by the coach, or you're bullied by the counselor, or the teachers were mean, or they used to sit you in the whatever. Get the fuck over it, everybody. Jesus Christ. It's called fucking growing up. She probably went to a place that was a little bit scared straight because they Mm. were probably going, we get a lot of socialites that are kind of out of control over here and we try to hit them with discipline and see if we can break them down. Fine. Again, if, if you were abused, I'm all ears. But we have taken this definition of abuse and we've spread it out so wide and so thin now that what what we used to just call discipline is now is now swerved into the lane of abuse. Like if she's going to come up with specific stuff, fine. People being mean or people being tough or disciplined. I every football coach I ever had was abusive, but I didn't look at them as abusive. <laughs> they were just doing their job. Like they just wanted to win. They well, call even- you everything and kick your hand when you're in a three point stance. Call you ladies. Even yeah, a former ladies. staffer said there was no training on how to physically restrain anyone. We just sort of did what we did. And uh, they said 100% of the staff abused their authority given to them. So 100%? That's what a former staffer said. That, oh, right. yeah, everybody abused it. Uh, do they but, still you know, exist? Nobody knew what they were doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. No one knows what they're doing. Everything is... You read the transcript of anything and it's all horrible now. Like, here's what this person said. Here's what this person did. Nobody had training, whatever it is. 
But what happened? I mean, what was done to her? I mean, I don't know what was done to her. I only saw the first half. I think I'll have to wait to the second half because that was just the sizzle we watched. That was just the tease. But like, I don't know, being pissed at your parents because they're trying to get you under control as a as a teen. I know everyone hates their parents when they're teens, but I don't know. She probably needed to stay at a place like that even longer than she ended up staying. But either way, everyone hates their parents, including me. (laughs) Well, U.S. President Donald Trump indicated that he is open to an election debate between he and Joe Biden, moderated by Joe Rogan. A tweet put up by UFC fighter Tim Kennedy, I think we have it, says, on my podcast with Joe Rogan, he offered to moderate a debate between Biden and Trump. It would be four hours with no live audience, just the two candidates' cameras and their vision of how to move this country forward. Who wants this? And Trump replied, I do. (laughs) Yeah, I'd watch. It probably oh, be the, yeah. it'd probably be the it would probably be the best form to to do this in. Uh we'd probably get more information than we uh ever needed. There'd probably be seven thousand sound bites of Trump saying horrible things that would definitely come back to haunt him. So I don't know how badly he wants to do this. I'm sure Biden's not gonna do this. But why Nothing not? Nothing comes back to haunt Trump. <laughs> no. All right, you're dead wrong on that one. Why uh why not? I mean, why couldn't we do it this way? It'd, it'd be better. I mean, I, I would, I would, it would be a, if, if you're looking, if you're, if you're saying, okay, what's a debate? Like, what are we trying to solve? What are we trying to accomplish in a debate? And I think what we're all trying to do is we're going, well, we'd like to kind of strip away the veneer and the husk of the canned answers or any of the, or, or, or the teleprompter speeches, or we just, we want to know long form what these people think on this subject and on that subject. Then in a way, this is kind of the purest form of that format. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a version of this format. And I like the no audience. The no audience is, yeah, is, is good because what happens is, is the people start playing to the 400 people Absolutely. that are in the room. and. Absolutely. And they start saying things that are sort of insane. Like they'll go, when I'm in charge, I'll shut down all prisons. And everyone starts <laughs> cheering. Yeah. You know, they go, not only that, I'll take the cops and put them in prison. And everyone starts right. cheering louder. And it's like, your constituency doesn't agree with that. You're just getting, you're just doing a hook em horns thing when you're the University of Texas, <laughs> which I, I can tell you the whole audience will just erupt if you yell hook em horns. And uh, it's a, it's a flashback to me and Drew playing. I think it was University of Texas at Austin. Yeah, that's the Longhorns. It, it becomes, it, when you get that crowd who agrees with you, it comes very easy. And then they do a thing where they go, who says, all right, show of hands, who thinks college should be free for people that are in this country illegally? And everyone starts raising their hand and there's a poor Guys, like, I'm raising my hand, too, because everyone has raised their hand and, like, people are cheering. But the audience should – COVID or not, there should be no audience in a debate. They they shouldn't be cheering. They shouldn't be saying things. They shouldn't be pandering or playing to that crowd at all. It's pretty – Yes. Let's not forget that all anyone ever remembers for years are the zingers. Right. It's it's all about the, you know, the gotcha with a clever line or whatever or the singer. In a a weird – Pure as long as we're on this purest form, there should be no audience, and they shouldn't even film it. It should all just show up in an audio file, like it should. So they should go on the Joe Rogan podcast and just sit in the studio and do it there. Yes, I'm going to go a deeper one. We should remove the names and the voice recognition, so we simply heard. The audible, the we'd have, okay, we're going to have two Asian women read, <laughs> read transcript. the transcript and you'll not, it's going to be the subject, school choice. And then you'll just hear the one Asian woman reading and the other Asian woman reading. And you're not going to hear the names. You're not going to see him. You're not going to go, that guy's got a sweaty upper lip. I don't trust right. him. You know what I mean? There'll be no audience yeah. and no anything. And then we'll That's have good. our purest form of answer. That's really When the good. one Asian woman comes out with uh, only Rosie O'Donnell, it might tip off. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Rosie's Someone starts a pig. screaming, you're the puppet. 
Yeah, it would it be it'd be an interesting thought experiment. No names, just answers, and we just start asking questions about taxes or school or police or whatever it is. And it'd be you would ingest the information more clearly that way, more purely that way. All right. Do you guys Absolutely. think do we now the uh First debate is two weeks from well, two weeks from when people, people hear this. Is that the 29th? That's right. Yeah, I know. I just talked to one. Well, August. August, like. Uh, Trump said they do the interview on Wednesday, but uh, you're going to be in Nashville on Wednesday. So I called back and asked him for the 29th. And I said, uh, yeah, Mike, that's the date of the first debate. And he's like, oh, well, we could do it later then, you know, and I'm like, no, no, we're not, it's not going to do the first debate. We're going to, you got to pick a new date, Mike. Don't ask for dates that are circled on their calendar. And he's like, oh, okay. So, um, is, do you think, is Biden showing up for that first debate? Do we think he's going to, I know he says he's going to be there. Is there going to, is anything going to come up between now and then? It would really shock me. If it did. Come up in in what way? Scandalously or health? No, or no, just like situation? yeah, like I got I, I tested positive for COVID. I'm 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 not gonna I'm not traveling. Or we'll do it mm-hmm. via Zoom or or some some version. Or is it just going to be straight ahead neutral site? You know, orator and both guys just standing standing up there. I, 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 you know, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, I, I thought I was, you know, one of many people uh, four years ago who was like, is Trump going to show up for these debates? Like, it wasn't in his best interest, and he did it anyway. I think Biden has not a whole lot to lose because the bar has been set so, well, we talked about on the show, the bar has been set so fucking low. They're still going with this narrative, like, he has dementia, he can't string a sentence together. It's like, I think we all were in agreement, like, but Biden's going to show up and be boring. And it's going and that's the most likely scenario. He could have a trip, could have a slip. Who knows? But my, my hunch is he'll just be boring with Biden. Well, that's interesting because I was going to say pretty much the opposite, which is there's really nothing in it for Biden to show oh, up at this. Because I disagree. People, well, but people have been saying, oh, my God, he's old. He's nuts. He's sl- go so downhill. And then he gained so much traction at the DNC and everybody loved that speech. And that's a high note. So why not just leave it at that? The, ex- the experts I've read, and I'm no expert, of course, is that there's enough people on the fence who if Biden were not to show up, that would be a, like a disqualifying. Oh, the guy's mm. lost it. He's afraid to show up. That, that, that would be a bad indicator for a certain segment of the population. Yeah. Well, maybe even like light supporters of him, too. It's interesting because this is really less about Biden and more of a referendum on Trump. So that would make the argument that we didn't need Biden. We just got to get Trump out of there. Like like Biden, I was talking to. I think I was talking to Drew about it. Oh, I was talking to August about it earlier today. There is something that Biden needs to be careful with Biden because of. Some of his wiring and then some of whatever he's going through, a little bit of an early onset something. He's got a little something going on. Has a kind of hair trigger. Yes. Uh, he has a, he has a, he's volatile. Like if some guy he'll, in the. He'll get excited and start tripping over his words. Right. If a guy stands up in the audience and goes like, uh, hey, your son, Hunter Biden, was he in Burisma? He'll go, hey, fatty, we'll hey, do some push ups. Yeah. Hey, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Like, and so on, Mac. Yep. Yep. now I talked to, I was talking to Drew about like Mr. Calm and steady hand having a little bit of a hot temper. And, yep. and Drew said, you know, he's got a little something going on neurologically, and this is kind of part of it, that that hey, old man, get off my lawn, you know, kind of thing. Do you think Trump goes in there and tries pushing some buttons to see if you can get him that. to pop off and kind of go, hey, Mr. Slow and Steady over there? It turns <laughs> out kind of angry. Be interesting if that's part of the strategy. Uh, what else we got, Gina Grant? Akon, the singer, has broken ground on an ambitious plan to build a futuristic city in Senegal that he says will be a real life version of Wakanda, the high tech nation portrayed in Marvel blockbuster Black Panther. This is according to CNN and many outlets. So Akon laid the first stone for Akon City. I feel like it should be called Akonda. And yeah, Akon City sounds like a prison. 
<laughs> Work will begin soon. Uh, according to its official website, the solar powered city will have healthcare facilities, offices, luxury houses, shopping malls, skyscrapers, eco friendly tourist centers. It will be a five minute drive from the country's new international airport. This singer was gifted 2,000 acres of land by Senegalese President Macky Sall to build the ambitious city. Akon also says he's raised part of the $6 billion required to do so through unnamed investors. Well, you know, we all grew up watching those sci-fi things with like the super cities with the monorail running through it. Mm -hmm. You know, Disneyland was kind of an attempt at that. It's got a monorail running Mm -hmm. through there and the Jetsons live there and everything. And it's like, it never works. I don't know why it never works. It's 2000 and almost 21. Could we get it to work? Like just start, you know, just the fact, the fact that you look out the window of your home or your apartment or wherever you are. And the first thing you see is these wooden telephone poles that were <laughs> dipped in creosote, like turn of the century, just got all this so ugly. black sap all over them. And it's just, that thing was a, a ponderosa pine that they chopped down 86 years ago and then they stripped it of its bark and dipped it in stuff that causes cancer and then just pile drove it into the ground and then put like an antenna on top of it and then strung wire from one yeah. to the next like the fact that i got a condo in malibu i look out the window of the living room there's there they go right down the highway I'm so glad you brought that up because we were driving through Malibu not too long ago, and I don't know, I don't know why I just had, you know, you, you have those moments where you look at something like through a child's eyes for the first time, and you're like, this fucking beautiful stretch of land, these oceanfront homes, this, this multi-million dollar properties, it's covered in a webbing, a net of uh, electrical and phone wires, just, just a net. And, Same and, thing with Manhattan Beach. Yeah, they're all little cockeyed. They've all been there since the 40s. <laughs> it's a disaster. They fall it's, off and start uh, fires and everything burns. Yeah, the transformer explode uh, right. a couple weeks right. ago. Right. Like, what are we doing with the wooden? But they're not even metal. They're not composite material. They're not. They're not plumb or level. There's like uh, they're strewn about in weird different positions. They got the weird cancer causing creosote like coating on them. Some of them have like weird spikes in their you know termite infested and it's like why why don't we just start with the fresh sheet of paper bury all the power yep. lines get the little generators and the solar stuff working like wouldn't that be nice yes wouldn't wouldn't you and w- wouldn't everyone easily go uh get behind a proposition in an election to bury all power lines <laughs> you a- would think so yeah. you would think but- so gina but let me do, let me tell you why yeah. I'm saying that is because uh, on Balboa Island, where Christie's parents inherited their uh, their house from the grandparents, uh, half the island voted to bury the lines. The other half of the island voted to keep them up. Oh my it was God. too expensive. And that, that was the thing in Manhattan Beach. It went like basically block by block, but they were charging each resident of that house, you know, like twenty grand or something. But if it was an overall California state tax, that that look, the whole state's on fire, and a lot of the, you know, PG and E, whatever. A lot of this could have been avoided if power lines were buried, and they're ugly as hell. So, can't we all pitch in a couple extra pennies and, and bury earth- these damn things? And then earthquakes—that's the most dangerous thing. Oh, damn sure. Power lines. Well, what if I they? Just, yeah. I know. What if they just said, "Hey, uh, people of California, would you rather have a bullet train that averaged thirty miles an hour from Merced to Fresno, or we just bury every one of these yeah. fucking lines, <laughs> and we'll have a ton of money left over?" That would be great. I, I, I know. It's like it's weird. It's so old. When you see pictures from like turn of the century and horses and carts and old dirt roads, you just see all those weird telephone poles everywhere. And I was looking out my window in Malibu just staring at one of those telephone poles going, what fucking year is it? Like, it, it, isn't this something a city and a state should figure out? Yes. Again, it would it would be nice. Any politician that just said, look, I don't give a fuck about schools and I don't care about Social Security. I don't care about the elderly and I don't care about special needs kids. I'm going to bury every fucking power line inside of three years in this goddamn state of ours. I will. It'll be clean. And by the way, anyone who's ever gotten drunk and ridden a moped into a power pole, you'd be alive today. (laughs) Think of the lives. Think of the lives. (laughs) 
Think of all the horrible Vespa accidents that are to are to are to come, and all the all the bird scooters with drunken people run into those right. fucking power poles. Like, if if they just said, "That's it, I'm the candidate of bearing every power line. You're never gonna have to look at this. No more downed power lines. No more nothing." As a matter of fact, Dawson, you can tell Max Zapata or tell Kalen. If you go back, here's the part that I like. You go back to the Irwin Allen movie Earthquake. Brian brought up Earthquake. Earthquake, circa 1974. It was 74. Earthquake, there was a pivotal scene when, like, little Johnny the kid was walking across the uh, L.A. River in, in, in Studio City, you know, the one that runs next to uh, Ventura Boulevard. And it was like, there's an earthquake and the power line thing started falling and the pole fell. And then the hot wire was like down in the thing. And Charlton Heston had to save him or uh, I'm trying to think. Maybe the guy who played Shaft had to had to save him. I'll, I'll figure it out. But either way, that is 1974. And the exact same technology, the exact same thing. If you walk out your house, you look out the windows, exactly the same as it was almost 47 years ago now. And the 47 years before that was the same. I mean, those, those things were old when the earthquake hit in 74. And it doesn't have to be. It's not like, come on, somebody come up with a solution. The solution already exists. If only somebody invented something called variable conduit. <laughs> Man. Oh, he he uh, he. They print the, money. They bury everything that 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 New York buried a whole train a hundred years ago. Yeah. And people, it's not that hard. We did it here too. You do a little trenching. You get one of the coolest named devices ever for digging a trench, called the ditch witch. Oh. Oh I yeah. Worse. Don't be on the, don't don't be on the business end of the ditch witch and they'll dig a trench and then you take your variable conduit and you put it in the trench and then you run your wires through the conduit. Does it leak? Does it poison the earth? No. And by okay, the way, good. then we could get the environmentalists on board because they cause all the they cause so many wildfires. And Save the telephone stuff for your grandma. We don't even need the landlines anymore. <laughs> Whatever you're running up there, Ma Bell, we don't need that shit. We just That's need right. the power. Irwin Allen, by the way, did not produce Earthquake. He oh. produced the, uh, the competing Towering Inferno. Oh. Uh, Mark Robson was the producer. Oh, really? So Irwin Allen did Towering Inferno. Poseidon he did Adventure. Poseidon Adventure. He did all those big whatever movies, but he didn't do Earthquake. Interesting. All right, so there's an earthquake, there's the big power lines, there's small telephone pole, the kid is on a bridge, the bridge falls into the wash, he's crossing the bridge, he falls off on his bike, takes a, takes a good spill, lands, uh, lands in the wash, the dam's going to break too, I think, he's laying there in the bottom. This is all we had. Karen Black, by the way, is starring in this. The ground is moving. All the hill houses on stilts are out there. Everyone's running around. They get a lot of mileage over just shaking the camera back and forth while people were running. And then showing a lot of the same shots on a lot of the Never a good sign. same things. Yeah, yeah. Not good enough for Irwin Allen. The stilt, oh, the house, goes down. stilt house falling down the side of a... A canyon. Karen Black gets away. She used to do a lot of Ooh. horror movies. She lands on the same piece of earth that they've been moving around for 10 minutes. Uh, and then at some point, that's her son. Her son is in the wash. The Ch- whole house goes down. Oh, yeah. There's oh, the, the whole uh, mission. <laughs> Who's going to make the tortillas? <laughs> All right. Now, later on, oh, sorry, Max Bata, but the kid is laying in the wash in the hot the uh, power lines that are heated up fall in there and the kid has oh, to no. escape because the water's coming through the thing. And, uh, oh, by the way, George Kennedy plays the cop in this oh, movie. Wow. Twirling a twirling. twirling a yeah. Bumper. Uh, bumper M- Morgan. Yeah. He, he then parlayed that into, into this. And there was a whole weird National Guard thing that had a kind of bizarre sexual, gay sexual twist to it. 
Did I ever tell you? I've told you guys about that, right? This does not sound familiar. Margot Gorshwin or whatever his name was. Crazy name. Mar- My God, Margot Gorshwin. Everybody's a character actor. He played a uh, he played a National Guardsman. And he had all these like palookas who lived in his apartment building who called him gay and made fun of him because oh yeah 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 very weird and homoerotic yeah, yeah yeah unnecessary unnecessary but yeah. later on when he was the national guardsman talk about everything old being new again he had the gun out and he saw the palooka guys like looting and back then part of the storyline was hey if you see a guy looting you get to shoot him. No questions asked, right? So it's like you're the guy in the apartment building, and these guys have been making fun of you for the last two years, calling you gay and everything, and now you got a gun, and you just caught them at an appliance store, and you get to shoot them. That's right. You're in the right. Didn't didn't we have a caller call in and say that her dad was one of the Palooka guys? Remember that? Yes, they, they, they did. All right, Adam, Gina. I'm afraid Karen yes. Block is not credited in the. In oh the, no! Then who was, was it, it? Victoria Principal? No, Victoria uh, Principal played the girlfriend of. All right, Victoria Principal, <laughs> Gina, you'll like this. Mm. Victoria Principal has a great set of tits, right? Sure. And and literally, her job in this movie was just to wear a tight shirt. And she was the boyfriend of Richard Roundtree, who was the motorcycle. Or she was the sister of the brother who like promoted this guy he was a daredevil, and she'd just stand at the bar in front of uh, drunken uh, George Kennedy and just take open her shirt up and show her this like tight braless t shirt thing. Oh. So Victoria Principal, now that's producing. <laughs> am I right or am I right? Yeah, all you right, are right. Then uh, that struck a chord with a ten year old Adam Carolla. But then the girlfriend of Chuck Heston was played by who? Ava Gardner? No, Genevieve Ava Gardner. Bujold? Ava Gardner was his wife. Huh? Gen- is it Genevieve Bujol in the pink? The- I guess that was her. Maybe I thought it was. It looked like Karen Black, but maybe it was Genevieve Bujol. Yeah, she was the girlfriend. It was back when Chuck Heston had a bitchy wife, and it was understood that he was banging a younger a younger chick. Yeah, that's them. Yeah, it's not Karen Black. It's Genevieve, whoever. Um, all right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad.